Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a painting in acrylics and we're gonna paint this cute little cardinal. Now you can use uh, supplies you have at home. I'm gonna be using the supplies that came in last month's Smart Art Box. And I'm just gonna go through and show you the stuff that I'm going to be using. I'm working on an eight by 10 inch canvas by Creative Mark. It's the edge canvas, meaning it's finished on all edges so you don't need to frame it, which is super nice, uh, saves money, and it's great to just be able to put a wire on the back and hang it up. I've got three Simply Simmons brushes, and if you want, you could also use a wider brush for the background. I have a 10 weld acrylic paint palette, which is handy for putting all these lovely paints in. And I'm gonna be using all the colors that came in my kit, except for the green, cause there's no green in this painting. And honestly, I do like to mix my own greens. Even if I do use a bottle green, I tend to use, uh, mix my own. And those are also Creative Mark brand. They're the Creative Inspirations paints. And I've never used them before and um, we'll see how they do. Also, we got this pink soap for cleaning the brushes up afterwards. And I have to tell you, it smells like a brand new baby. It's a really nice smelling soap and I did get my brushes clean so gotta love that now let's get to painting when I lay out my palette and I'm going to be using a lot of white I like to put out two different containers of white and actually I'll do that in a lot of paintings anyway and just not put so much if I don't think I'm going to use it that way I don't get my colors contaminated when I'm mixing I wanted to mention this, if you are somebody that has a hard time getting those tiny caps off of tubes or you have some arthritis or strength issues, pick up paints that have larger caps like these because they'll be so much easier to work with because you can get the caps off easier. And if you wipe off the caps, if they get a little paint on the inside and you wipe them off um, before you put the cap back on, that'll keep it from getting glued shut, which is another great time saving tip. Now I'm putting out quite a bit of paint here. Um, I am not gonna use all of this. I was surprised at how far this paint went because I figured it was probably more of a student grade than an artist grade, um, but it went really far. So if you're doing this, don't put out as much red as I did. You're not gonna need as much black. You only need like a, a pea size amount of these colors. The white you'll need a little bit more of just cause we're doing so much snow, but for the, um, the red and the blue and the um, black, just a little pea size amount would be more than enough. You will need probably a little bit more ye yellow than I did there and you might also want to do the thing that I did with the white and put out two little drops of yellow. That way um, you don't end up contaminating it or you have that little bit of fresh paint to get into while you're mixing because you will be doing a lot of color mixing today. This is a great um, painting to sketch right on. It's not too complicated. That's why I don't have a pattern available, but I will put a link to the reference photo I used in the video description. Um, I got a great tip from my friend Cinnamon Cooney, the art Sherpa. She sketches on with watercolor pencils before she does her acrylics because they turn right back into paint just like they do with watercolors. I love that tip. I wanna thank you for sharing that with me. Cinnamon, she has great acrylic painting tutorials. Um, and since she told me that, I have always used that tip in my sketching on of acrylic paintings. So after I sketched the branches, which are just some brown lines, I decided to use a red watercolor pencil and sketch in an oval for the cardinal's body and then kind of like a pointy oval for the cardinal's head. And honestly, I'm gonna tell you, um, don't do this with red. I did this with red because I thought cardinals are red. It'll be great when I go to paint it, but the red wanted to go in my background. So I would highly recommend you sketch out this cardinal in like a really light gray or light purple color so that it will go with your background. But at least you get to see it nice and bright because I'm using a red pencil and I'm a little crazy. Um, but basically, you know, we got some ovals, we got a little triangle for the beak. Very, very easy to sketch on. I do encourage you to try drawing that freehand. Now we're gonna jump in with the painting and what I did was actually grabbed one of my wider flat brushes and this is totally unnecessary, but I wanted to um, kind of cover this area a little quicker. Feel free to use the um, smaller flat brush that came in the kit. Uh, I just put on some white, kind of like you'd wet the paper if you were doing watercolor. And then I took that brush that had white on it and grabbed a little yellow and just kind of tapped it off on my palette. And that's just gonna give me the kind of like a warmer, um, area in the distance to kind of look like that snow is getting lit up by the sun. It's very subtle. You don't want it too yellow. You don't want to look like yellow snow or anything. You just basically want to set that ambiance of having that um, brighter, lighter area in the top of your painting to give it a little bit of lift and interest. Don't be afraid of those red dark lines around the bird. That's just where I went in um, with the white paint. It kind of activated that color. It's not gonna be a problem, but that's why I told you to use like a light gray or purple. Now I'm using the um, flat brush. I'd say it's about a 3 8 inch wide flat brush that came with the kit. And I'm using that with some white with a little bit of blue on my brush to kind of put shadows in the snow. And I'm just kind of using the blue on its own with the white because I know it's gonna bump into that red bird and pull out some purple shadows, which is fine. It's 
just um, kind of a pain in the butt and I don't want you to have that same issue. So go ahead and use your lighter, uh, your lighter gray, but it's gonna work out just fine. So using these horizontal strokes, what I'm trying to do is get the look of kind of branches from trees casting shadows on the snow. And keep on adding those bluish purple shadows as you get to the bottom of the canvas. You want to keep those streaky lines and you want it to be a little bit darker as you reach the bottom of the canvas. That will give your painting a little bit of visual weight and make it look a little more pleasing to the eye. And yes, I sped this segment up just a little bit because it's just very repetitive, but I wanted you to see how the paint builds um, on the bottom of the canvas. Since we put that white down first, it gives you that beautiful blending base that you need. Now I wanna mix up some darker shadows. So what I'm doing here is using a little bit of that red and a little bit of that blue and making more of a um, shadowy purple. And I'll be adding that to the shadow areas on the bottom of my painting. And since I'm gonna have some heavy dark branches on the um, left side of my painting and up in the left upper corner, I wanna kind of balance that out by putting some of those purple shadows in the bottom corner and also up along the right hand side of the painting. It's all about balance. You use your reference photo as a guide, but then your artist's eye will give you um, kind of guidance as to where you need to put other shadows and depth and objects to make everything all work out. Now we're gonna start painting the bird. Now I'm loading up my uh, flat brush, the same one I was using, with some yellow paint. And notice how I only have paint on the tips of the bristles. I try not to get my paint more than halfway up my bristles that way. I don't end up getting paint into the ferrule because then once the, the paint touches that metal piece that holds the bristles, that's when you end up with trouble. So what I'm doing here is adding yellow to the highlight areas of my bird. I have it on the belly, I have it on the shoulder. And also kind of on the forehead of the bird, I'm sure they have like really technical bird names, I just don't know them. But by putting this yellow in now, I'm gonna be able to blend into it and I'll have lighter and brighter areas. Now I did not dry my background before I did this. You totally could if you wanted to, but since I didn't paint over the bird when I was doing my background, I think I'm pretty safe to go in there. I'll notice like on the tail, I'll have a little bit of browning because of the blue and the purple in the background, but it's not a big deal. And it's really gonna make everything kind of cross pollinate and seem very natural looking. You can also redefine your design a little bit if you need to with your brush. So nothing is set in stone. It's acrylics. If you make a mistake, you can paint over it. So that's probably the best thing about using acrylics as a medium. And I'm using long handled brushes. So hopefully it doesn't feel like that brush handle is gonna poke you in the eyeball. Now I've got some red. I'm just picking that up on the end of my brush. Same way, guys. I am not letting that paint anywhere near the ferrule of the brush. And I'm going to start blending in to my yellow area. That way I'll have a little bit more orangey brightness on the rounder and lit up parts of the bird. And it'll just kind of help it look not like a red blob in the middle of a white piece of paper. So I think that's kind of where... Um, uh, when you're a beginner, you get a little confused. You're like, okay, I'm painting a cardinal, which is bright red, on a snowy branch with a snowy background. And that can be so confusing because you're just thinking, well, I got red and white, what else is there? You really have to look at your reference photo and look at, like I looked at a couple of reference photos just to make sure that I was getting um, the details on the bird right because it was kind of an odd um, point of view. You're kind of looking down at the bird slightly from the reference photo. So I wanted to make sure I was getting things accurately. So what I'm doing here is putting in my, um, more purest shades of red and just kind of letting it blend where it meets the yellow. See how I'm kind of flicking up my brush with very little pressure. That's kind of feathering those colors together and giving me a nice subtle soft blend. Now I did find with these acrylic paints and I have, uh, I usually use Liquitex. I found that these paints stayed wetter a lot longer than what I was used to. So it was kind of a pleasant surprise. They behaved a little bit more like oils, which I was very surprised for an inexpensive paint. And I didn't notice very much color shift either after they dried, I didn't notice any color shift. So I was really, really impressed with these. And, um, and they're the creative inspiration paints if you want to look them up. Now I am using the chisel edge of my brush to kind of go in there and make sure that I'm keeping my definition there with a crest on his head. And again, I'm kind of blocking in colors, like how you do a paint my number at this point. I try to make sure I keep everything defined so I don't end up with a blob of red in the middle of my canvas that I can totally tell what every part of the bird is. So you want to go ahead and block in all of those mid values with your red. I definitely notice when I'm painting with acrylics I have favorite brushes and 
I find that the flat brushes with a chisel edge like these, um, Simply Simmons, this is a probably a 3 8 inch wide brush. I find that I can really manipulate the paint much easier with this than like with a round brush. But with watercolors, I definitely favor a round brush. So it just depends on the medium that you're using, what brushes you're going to find the most useful. Now I will be using a round brush because there are um, times where you really want to get that really fine detail or you want a softer stroke when you're painting and the round brushes come in very handy for that. Now I'm using one of those round brushes, the smaller one that came in the kit. Now it said it was a number 12 and I think the long handled brushes have a different sizing than the short handled brushes. I would call this more like a six if you're using like a short handled brush uh, or like a toll painting brush. And I'm using red, yellow, and white together to make kind of a peachy color. And I'm going ahead and painting in the beak. It's basically just like a cone or a triangle shape. Nothing fancy there. Now with that same brush, I'm picking up some black. And notice how I load my brush. I kind of put it in the paint and twist it. And that way I get paint just on the tip of that brush and I get a lot of detail. And I'm going to go in and paint kind of the mask around his beak. That black almost looks like a bandit's mask. And that's really going to make it look like a cardinal. You can really get almost like a pen fine precision when you load your brushes correctly. That means don't get your paint onto the furl. Keep that paint on the lower half of the bristles. I know it's hard to do, but it is so important if you want to control that brush to keep that paint where it belongs. If it creeps up there, wash your brush and start again. Wash your brush, dry it off and start again. It's going to save you so much time because you're not going to have to go back in and correct your mistakes where you get a blob here or you can't get your paint in the right spot because you can't really see where it's coming off the end of your brush. Really, this stitch in time saves nine folks. I'm also going to go ahead and add some details into the wing, like it kind of separate the wing from the body. And since my red paint is still wet, it's going to blend in with that black. And since I'm using that small round brush, I really don't have a lot of pigment on my brush. It's just kind of um, dragging that little bit of black paint I have on the brush into the wet red paint. And it's just giving me a nice blend and definition there. As you're painting this, I want you to think of the phrase in economy of strokes, meaning you just want to put the strokes of paint down that give you the essence of the bird. You could overwork this painting. You could spend three hours on this painting and it's not going to look as good as if you just paint it in half an hour and you, you just put the paint down and you walk away and you come back and look at it the next day. I'm telling you, this is a simple painting. You want to just put the strokes that you need and no more. So what I'm doing here with the black is I've got black on my brush. The red paint is wet. I'm just kind of lightly stroking the paint on where I think I would see a feather. And that is giving me the shadow. It's giving me the definition I need. It's hinting to what the um, bird is made up of and your brain is filling in the rest. And that is how um, doing kind of impressionistic painting works. It really will give you a lovely result. Just try not to overwork it. Okay, now we're getting kind of into the nitty gritty and we're going to start blending some of these colors together that we've blocked in. So I've mixed up some red and yellow on my palette and I'm just kind of stroking that into the kind of belly and chest area because I want the color to be really rich. Sometimes it takes a couple of coats to really cover the canvas, um, especially if you're using a student grade paint. But even with artist grade, sometimes they're just kind of transparent and you just kind of need to build up a little bit of color. Now, the thing I am noticing about this paint is that I am able to blend blend into the other colors and it's not lifting too much, but the yellow isn't super strong. So if you have a paint line that has a, if your yellow paint is a little bit more powerful, you might not need to use so much. Just keep kind of keep that in mind. I always try to go light with red whenever I'm mixing or actually whenever I'm mixing anything with yellow, I try to go light with a color and mixing into it because often the other color is going to be stronger. So just go ahead and start blending your colors together. You don't want to lose a definition. It's a very, um, it's a very delicate balance to be able to blend the colors without losing your definition. But you can kind of see here how I'm working with the mid ranges just to kind of um, unify my whole bird with my paint. Now we're going to let the bird dry a bit and we're going to work on the branches. So what I'm doing here is pretty much scooping up all of the red, the yellow paint that I have left, adding some red and some blue. And these are primary. So you know what happens when you mix them all together, right? We get mud, but that's what we're going for because we need brown. So right here, my mix looks a little, um, a little green. So if my mix looks a little green, I need a little red because 
red is the opposite of green. So now as I mix it up and I've got that red in there and it's looking a little orange, I'm gonna need to add a little blue to that. So this is an excellent um, way for you to learn color theory, making brown, because whenever it gets a little bit too green, you gotta add red. If it gets a little too purple, you gotta add yellow. So, you know, you just kind of play with those colors until you find the balance of the brown that you want. You can see here it's getting quite nice. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue there just to give it um, a little bit deeper, more umbery quality. But if you don't have brown, you can totally make it. I think it's probably worth buying a tube of brown because you go through so much of it, but definitely learn how to mix it because you will learn so much about color theory in the process. Color theory isn't something you can just read about. You gotta mix your paint together, make a mess, and that's how you're gonna learn the best. I think doing is the best way to learn anyway. Now I'm using the larger of the round brushes that I got in my kit, and I would honestly say it's more like a standard size 12 for using a toll painting or watercolor style short handled brush but I think they called it like oh let me just look right here on the barrel they call it a 20 um I think because it's a long handled brush I think they they kind of um measure long handled brushes different than short handled brushes I think it's a little crazy um but that's a topic for another day. And basically I am painting on these branches and look how I'm holding the brush. I'll go on the tip if I want to have a lot of control or I want a finer line and then I'll kind of wiggle it and I'll twist my handle. I'll also lay it kind of on its side if I want a thicker line. I basically just keep moving my hand and dragging the brush around so I vary my strokes and I get a more interesting looking branch. I don't want a straight line. There's no straight lines in this painting. So if you tell me that you can't draw a straight line I'm gonna say, you know what? I got a painting tutorial for you. You can totally paint this. So now I'm just taking a little bit of that black right off my palette and um, I didn't clean my brush. My brush is still dirty and I'm just using that to shade the bottom part of my branch. So we're gonna have snow on this pretty soon. This is just gonna give a little bit of depth, a little bit of shadow for where our snow's gonna be and just make our branch look a little bit snazzier. So you wanna do that for the main branch the bird is sitting on. And by the way, I'm doing the branch after the bird because it's so much easier to put a branch in after the bird than it is to make the bird land on the branch. Trust me, folks. And we're gonna switch to a smaller brush and we're gonna paint all those tiny little branches that are kind of framing your canvas and adding little branches here and there is a great way to balance things out. If your bird is more on the left-hand side, put your branches on the right-hand side. Just make it so you have a visually pleasing balance to your painting. And it's up to you how many branches you put in. I went a little overboard. You don't have to do that many. So now I'm just using a little bit of straight yellow back to the bird again, and I'm just reinforcing the highlights because I thought I blended a little bit too much on the bird step. Um, if you got it perfect, on that step, you don't need to do this. This is just because I felt I needed to brighten parts up a little bit. And I always think it's a good idea to kind of leave in those adjustments and kind of how I fix things because people say it's really helpful. I know it would be helpful for me if I was on the, um, if the shoe was on the other foot. I'm zooming in to show you some detail on how I load a brush and how I'm going to be add some details to this bird here to finish her up. So look how I'm twisting that in the black. I'm kind of wiggling my brush and I'm twisting. And yeah, the paint's getting close to the ferrule, but it's not touching the ferrule. I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. And um, what I'm going to do here is add some of the finer details. And this is, brush is a little big for this, um, but you can see if you load a brush properly, you can totally go in there and get details and things. So I'm kind of shaping the around the beak so it's more of a cone shape because before it was just kind of like a weird triangle and I wanted to make that look a little more defined. I am darkening up the mask around the bird and kind of giving it that um, the shape that it needs. And I'm adding a little bit of definition kind of um, to separate the head from the body, kind of pulling in a sh little shadow under the crest. I'm also defining the wing a little bit. Um, there's not a ton of paint on my brush, but I am just kind of blending it in with the red that's already there and kind of defining the feathers just to pull out any sort of bits that I can um, kind of show on the bird so it doesn't look like a red blob. Now I'm going to take just a little bit of white just on the pointy tip of my round brush and just add a glint in the bird's eye. Notice how I've loaded that just on the tip and basically just a little dot. Now you can't really see the, um, the eye from the reference photo but I know it's there and I feel like it needs it and also a little highlight on the beak while I'm at it. 
We are in the home stretch now. We're gonna put some snow on our branches and we're gonna start with our shadow colors. So what I'm basically doing is taking some white and adding it into that uh, purpley mix, which is the blue and the red I already had on my palette. You can add a little bit of black in there since we've already used it if you want to, but basically we've made kind of a really light uh, gray. And, and I'm emphasizing light because I'm dabbing this on branches and some of the paint is wet on the branches. So it's gonna be a little dull and muddy and murky and that is fine because what we're painting here is the shadows on the branches. So I wanna have a little bit of snow right underneath where the uh, cardinal is perched. So I'm using tiny dabs under there and then I'm using kind of bigger gobs um, elsewhere so that you can kind of see where the snow is built up. Um, it looks just like snow has fallen. You still get the really chunky bits of snow on the branches. It hasn't been knocked off yet by birds and wind. It's just kind of that freshly fallen snow I want to show, but you have to have the shadows down in order for the bright snow to have that contrast so that it really looks bright. So I know it's looking dingy and dirty and gross right now, but we need to have the shadow layer in order for the bright show to, snow to show. So clean that brush off and now grab some white paint and you're simply gonna dab um, globs of snow on top of the shadow you, you already put down. Now you could wait for that shadow to dry. You could wait for all the paint to dry before you put this bright highlight on. It's completely up to you, but I really don't think it's necessary. Just make sure you have a dry paper towel handy that you can wipe your brush off um, after every few strokes because it will get muddy because it's gonna pick up your shadow color. Um, of course, you can totally let it dry and go back in with it, but I think you might lose some of that immediately and some of that spontaneity and blendability and just a la prima look that I think is so lovely in an acrylic painting. Again, it's your call if it bothers you to be having to wipe your brushing, brush all the time or to, um, or to be getting that kind of muddy paint underneath, then go ahead and do it. I'm just worried about it looking a little too cookie cutter if I let it dry um, and then went back in and put the highlights on. But it's your painting. You can do whatever you want. So you, all you have to do here is just go in and put the white highlights on top of all of your snow. And kind of, I kind of like how it's blending there. If you notice, you'll get all these subtle different shades of grays and blues and whites. And it, I think, looks really natural. And that's what you want. Now, something that would totally look cool here if you're feeling a little ambitious and um, brave, you could totally sprinkle some clear iridescent glitter into that wet white paint and it would really look like snow. It would be really pretty and who wouldn't want to love, want to drag that painting out every winter and hang it up when you've got that little bit of snow sparkle on there. Totally up to you. I didn't do it because I didn't have glitter handy when I was painting, but I think it would totally be a fun way to um, embellish this painting if you wanted to. But I also wanted to keep just to what was in the Smart Art Kit in case you're painting along um, and you're a subscriber and you want to um, you want to just use what's there. I wanted to kind of be true to that too. But if you have glitter and you want to use it, then you go right ahead. Um, if you're interested in the Smart Art Kits here, because they are a sponsor here on the channel and I do appreciate it, I'll put a link in the video description so you can sign up to uh, get one of their subscription boxes or sign up for a longer subscription if you want more than one. I think they offer a really great value. Otherwise, I would not recommend them or endorse them here on my channel. And you can see my brush looks like it's going to poke you in the eye, doesn't it? It. Um, I usually prefer to have short handled brushes if I'm sitting to paint, but honestly, if I wasn't doing a video, I would paint this at an easel so I could kind of stand back and evaluate my painting as I go. And that's really where the long handled brushes come in being handy. So if you're trying to decide whether you should get long handled brushes or short handled brushes, ask yourself, do you sit and paint or do you stand and paint? If you stand and paint at an easel, you're gonna want the long handled brushes typically because it allows you to stand back from your work and evaluate it while you're painting. If you like to sit when you paint, you're gonna want the shorter handled brushes because um, you're not gonna poke yourself in the face while you're painting, basically. Um, but it, and it depends on what medium you're doing. Now I just put a little highlight on the beak there um, and I'm kind of just going around now and evaluating my painting. I'm really happy with the painting at this stage. I decided that I would just go ahead and sign my name. I'm using that smaller brush, the number 12 round, but I loaded it just on the tip of my bristles, gave it a twist, and I was able to get enough detail to sign my name. But you might want to opt for a smaller brush if you have one. If you like the supplies I use today, check out our sponsor, Smart Art. You can find them at smartartbox.com. Link is in the video description. You might be able to still get this kit. If not, you can sign up for future kits and they never disappoint. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. I'd love to paint with you again. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.